thank you. I, 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 first of all, I would like to thank uh, organizers Milinji for inviting me to this prestigious event. Uh, me, I, in my own small way, uh, would try my best to update you what is happening in the unmanned in the uh, un unmanned world. The challenges India is facing, the world is facing, and how do we correct it? And most importantly, I would like to look at it: how do we become self-reliant in India? Okay, so we will talk about drone threat, India's drone challenges, airspace for drone operations in India, counter drone systems, India's drone program, India's counter drone systems, challenges and way forward. And lastly, Goa as a drone technology hub. So small, slow, low flying drones have been posing threat around the world and it's not started now, it started long back, but 2017 onwards I've been noticing that this trend is increasing. The first attack happened in uh, Ukrainian ammunition uh, facility in 2017, and ISIS, uh, terrorist organization, have been using uh, UAVs or unmanned aerial system or drones for various uh, nefarious activities. Uh, 2018 saw two major Russian bases in air, uh, Syria being attacked by collaboratively uh, by 13 drones who carried different kinds of uh, weapon systems and struck Russian bases. That was a shock. 2018 saw uh, Nicaragua, uh, the president of Venezuela being attacked by drone. Of course, uh, some soldiers were uh, hurt. Uh, nothing happened to the president. 2019 was a shocker for the world when almost uh, major port of uh, part of oil uh, supply line was hampered because of collaborative attack by about 10 drones and of course missiles. 2020-2020 was a shock to the world when Armenia lost nagorno karabakh uh, area to Azerbaijan. And remember, Azerbaijan was defeated in the previous wars. So drones made major difference and Armenia paid the price for not preparing for the emerging technologies. And then there was an international collaboration, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Israel, Pakistan, simultaneously supporting Azerbaijan. Now imagine the country like Pakistan, Israel being on the same site. This was made possible by the technology. 2021, India faced the, the threat of drone and when an armed drone attacked Jammu A base which is right next to Pakistan border. The drone commercial use is an asset. So people say you can use commercial drone. And here if you see this, war, uh, this video, a commercial use, uh, drone user, how he becomes a vulnerable if he is using it in war. Here you see a soldier using a commercial drone and he's operating, you see he's just operating the drone. The moment he lands, he picks it up. And now you see what happens, what an adversary does. Now watch, it's a matter of seconds he was attacked. That is a threat when we look at the electronic components being used and we, we say it's a global supply chain, but it's not relevant in some critical areas. That has to be understood by our developers. Uh, in fact, Ukraine war in 2020 saw TB2 becoming hugely successful, but that was the initial part of it. It was used as a media, uh, a sort of propaganda creating narrative that uh, Ukrainian drones are really destroying the Russian uh, positions. But as soon as the uh, Russia got its act together, strengthened its air defense, uh, this TB2 was no more, no more in the news. This is a video, uh, actually if you see here with the audio, you realize how background music, a kind of perception was created that drones are doing a heroic work, but subsequently these were no more in news because of robust air defense uh, measures taken by Russia. Now, Hamas attack on Israel was a shock. Israel is a very uh, strong uh, military and air defense capabilities. 
Hamas was able to use novel methods using low technology but innovatively to strike Israeli positions including some of the drones had destroyed their uh, watchtowers and many of the critical posts so that the, thereafter Israel was not able to respond in time. Look at India. India has a multiple challenges. The war, what you see, what happened in Armenia, Azerbaijan and other countries is not applicable to India because our adversaries have more uh, robust air defense capability vis-a-vis -vis certain situations where uh, drones have become very effective. So don't expect similar scenario in India. Uh, also, simultaneous operation of manned and unmanned operations in future war is going to create challenges. It is quite possible that we may have some attrition. It means manned aircraft may strike, you no, know, collide with an unmanned aircraft, or we are not able to undertake operations. So there are certain technologies which we need to develop to really meet future challenges. On the border, we are worried about our arm strikes on the border, smuggling, criminals, insurgents using these trains, and then. India is also concerned about China-Pakistan collaboration, Pakistan-Turkey collaboration, Turkey-Ukraine collaboration. How Turkey-Ukraine becomes relevant? Imagine if Turkey gets a technology and that comes to Pakistan. Now, that's a concern as a sovereign nation. We have to, as a air defense people, have to carry out an assessment. So these are potential challenges. And now, Indian government on, on 25th August 2021 decides to open 90% of the airspace for the drone operation operations below 400 feet. Now that adds to the challenges. Everywhere you are allowed to operate uh, uh, drones. From an airport, uh, airport to till 5 kilometer entire airspace is red zone. Means you need a special permission to operate in this area. From 5 kilometer to 8 kilometer you need a permission from ATC to operate. You can operate. From 8 kilometer onwards to 12 kilometers you can operate only up to 200 feet. From 12 kilometer onwards if it is a green zone you can operate up to 400 feet. There is no restriction. And now you look at these red zones. This is the airspace which is restricted. The red ones. Rest all green you can operate. So that is the impact or uh, progressive initiative taken by the Indian government in 2021. But you need to know these red loans. Now, India wants to become a self-reliance. India, uh, India uh, has declared a policy that it wants to become a global drone hub by 2030. Then we have an aspiration of self-reliance. As I showed you how critical components could kill your own people. So we want critical components to be indigenized. We want a research-based approach. We want to become a developed nation by 2047. Now these are the goals which guide our India's trajectory and growth and course corrections which we take. We are pursuing tapas, short range UAV, um, Archer new generation UAVs, remotely piloted strike aircraft. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is developing a futuristic com uh, combat aerial teaming system which is also called as man and man teaming. In addition, our private sector entity recently demonstrated a high altitude pseudo satellite which will operate in stratosphere. We also have uh, Indian uh, companies participating in Meher Baba competition demonstrating a SOM UAV. SOM technology did not exist in the past. And it, India, this is the first time India ever attempted to, to develop a technology which was still evolving in the world. Even when you look at a space technology, it existed. But SOM technology did not exist. It was still being developed even in the advanced countries. So that was, uh, became possible when Air Force launched uh, Meher Baba Swarm competition on 8th October 2018. Now, currently, Meher Baba 2 is on since 2018. And we are looking forward to the Meher Baba 3 competition. Now, these kind of innovative initiatives really bring, take India to the self-reliance. Private industry has developed um, a variety of drones. So far, they have kept it to the smaller drone. The bigger drones, they have not yet attempted in the real sense. So how do you counter? Counter, you need a detection system, radar, RF system, electro-optic, infrared, acoustic system. Then you need... You have to, once you identify, you need to neutralize them. You jam, you spoof, you use lasers, hyper microwave, kamikaze drones, hybrid system. Hybrid means more than one counter drone system. Defender drone and airborne counter drone system. This is what is required, not that they are available. So far, we have done jamming, spoofing, lasers. 
Kamikazu is a work in progress. Hybrid systems are being developed. Uh, but uh, Defender drone also is a work in progress. Airborne counter drone system not yet operationalized. Uh, Hyper microwave is not yet operationalized. So swarm is a threat in future for which we have to develop. This is the kind of innovative initiatives taken by the Ministry of Defense, which is uh, helping India grow. Bhumi is a Ministry of Home Affairs uh, initiative headed by Border Security Force. These kind of initiatives really help you develop very niche and innovative technologies in India. India, when it was attacked on 25th uh, June 2021, we were worried, do we have to import? Do we go to the foreign vendors? We did go. But IDEX, which was launched in 2018, came handy and we were able to acquire indigenous counter drone systems. Now, having we uh, developed some certain technologies, we have to go for more advanced technologies. We have to counter, let's say, swarm drone or, or uh, niche technologies being developed by the adversaries. So we need more such innovation initiatives to fill the technology gaps as well as develop, um, counter the threat of emerging technologies. So what are the challenges and way, way forward? Uh, Actually, we have a defense R&D program, but we do not have a civil drone R&D program and Atmanirbhata policy. So I believe we need to look at a civil drone Atmanirbhata policy. This will ensure we have a civil military fusion. You remember civil military fusion is uh, helps you develop niche technologies and make them viable in the commercial world. Unless you have a uh, military technologies which have a civil application and civil technologies which have a mili military technologies, uh, application they are optimized by launching R&D initiatives you really do not achieve the critical mass or the op uh, operational limits which can be used for uh, your um, uh, operational uses then I think we need to have a national policy on development manufacturing and export of counter UVs now we have some of our startups and MSME developing counter drone technologies but whether they can export it whether they have uh, they can further develop it, where do they do, do trials. Right now they have been able to do to and some extent with the military but really go to the advanced systems we need a national policy so that we can keep track of them but at the same time make it uh, provide ease of uh, development to the uh, Indian companies. Uh, countering the hostile small drone threat is a, has posed new questions. Who will be responsible for the air defense? Air defense was the Air Force responsibility. But somebody launching right next to your house and if you have to neutralize, by the time Air Force uh, base which is launched, let's say for 50, 100 kilometer, he may not be able to respond in that manner. So now these new challenges require new thought process, new collaboration with the police, military, uh, central armed police forces to uh, you know counter this threat. So there is a new thought process required, new technology development initiatives required and synergy among these people to really counter this emerging threat. Uh, we, we had an uh, aircraft which could uh, really neutralize an enemy aircraft or enemy missile or other system but now we have a small drones or rather drones being launched from a very very small basis. So now we need an, such aircraft systems on the aircraft that we can not only neutralize them but even pro protect ourselves. Recently in the Russia-Ukraine war the combat aircraft were attacked by the drones. So I think new technologies are required so you have to be aware, you have to prepare for these kind of technologies. So a lot of these uh, civil uh, technologies also we want to travel uh, from within the city to the airport by unmanned system but for that we have to do R&D program that's why civil R&D programs become important for future uh, coming to Goa I have four specific recommendations first indigenously designed, developed, manufactured procurement policy. Now, why do I see that? Any Indian innovator, you go to him, he's not able to really sell his products within India. Because we go for an relevant policy, we really do not say it is indigenously designed, it meets the global standards, if it is uh, having the similar performance, this has to be given performance, uh, priority. So I think that part has to be really encouraged to really promote innovation in India. Uh, we need to make aeronautics, drone, counter drone technology roadmap. I see a lot of academic institutions teaching what is already existing. 
they are investing on R&D on technologies which exist. We need to work on technology gaps. So I think we need to find technology or technology readiness gaps, uh, readiness level gaps. Uh, we need to launch suitable drone and counter drone technology development initiatives as I brought out the gaps to fill these specific gaps. And lastly, I feel uh, Goa should have an air, land, sea, aeronautics and drone testing site. Now, why do I sue that? Uh, please watch my next slide. See, this is a map which is shown on a digital sky. This map is of Goa. And if you leave the red uh, mark outside, it is there in the Ministry of Civil Aviation uh, website, you can have uh, drone testing sites in any of those areas. Now, this is a, a national requirement. Can we create an environment that can we provide the airspace where uh, drones can be tested, uh, aircraft can be tested? I think uh, so far we have come up with a drone uh, two testing sites, but they do not have the long distance uh, airspace defined so far. So I think it will be a, one of the uh, carry home point. Can we use this vast expense of water to go care, test drones and uh, aircraft system which are being developed by the private sector? Uh, this is Baba Kalyani, he, he uh, now since video is not, audio is not playing, so I'll just tell you the gist of it. He says, TOT is not same as indigenous design because you will be dependent on your OEM for upgradation, uh, you know, uh, changes, making a new design or, you know, uh, really transforming into indigenous design capability. If we don't have that capability, if we do not understand these two differences, we may be thinking we are doing a good job. So I think there has to be very clear understanding of what we get in TOT, what we need, where are the gaps, and uh, can we make it to the next level of indigenous design development and making a mark in the global industry. If we really want to uh, create export market or create, uh, capture the expo uh, global market, we really have to become IP and indigenous design-led industry in India. Thank you. This is a food for thought from our ex-president, uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Thank you. Can you go to back to that uh, previous slide where the red zone was shown? I will, I'll show, if it works. Yeah. So, uh, you said apart from that red zone, uh, South Goa or eastern side of Goa is all green zone. So That is, uh, see this uh, map is only for 400 feet. Yeah. Above that, we will have to co collaborate or rather coordinate with the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Yeah. So till 400 feet, we can do it. But if we have to really make a uh, national level test site, then we have to create an air, air corridor of above 400 feet. In fact, I would recommend if Goa has to do it, we can also create a corridor of testing um, of let's say 5 nautical mile and 50 nautical mile mile area, 5 nautical mile width and 50 nautical mile where people can do testing of let's say medical uh, delivery. They can do testing of let's say uh, long term logistic supply. So that can be created by identifying the specific areas and um, uh, taking a permission of Ministry of Civil Aviation and allowing anybody to come here, you know, they just bring their machine and we identify safe area so that it's not pose uh, danger to the populated area. We avoid the populated areas and we, we can create a drone operating testing corridors. We can uh, create those kind of facilities. No, my question was like, uh, uh, there are two parts in that. One is, if you look at South Goa, Sulkarna and Kepe area, and then from that side, it's less dense, dense area compared to what is happening on the coastal side and uh, where the red zone is. And uh, who does this? Like, is it the government's role to do this testing area or is it a private party who can build so, this corridor? So what, what government can do is they can identify an area and uh, propose, uh, see, when, whenever government has to do it, uh, its connectivity has to be kept in mind. Secondly, the associated uh, infrastructure has to be kept in mind, where which, which is built or which can be built. Now, once that is done, then you can collaborate with the industry bodies to come up with a proposal to develop that area, to form a testing site for the, let's say you, you decide we want a state drone testing site 
go a state drone testing site come up with a proposal but you identify you know these are the three potential areas where we have an airspace up to 5000 feet we have a 15 nautical mile space you suggest out of these three areas what can be done so government can take an initiative this same thing can be proposed by the industry also they can do the survey in collaboration with the government sign a mou ki we will uh, collaborate with the industry you help us uh, contact the ministry of civil aviation to identify five six areas which can be made a goa state uh, national uh, goa state uh, uav or drone testing site and no because uh, why i was asking is i know uh, there are some people who are planning to uh, do a drone pilot training center in goa so if that can happen then this can be a collaborative part or an additional part of that so it can be combined together as well so when i look at uh, drone um, um, rpt or remote pilot test uh, training organization uh, they don't need much of flying area they need very less area but when you are looking at a let's say state level testing site you need larger air space you need uh, you know uh, if not a operating area at least the larger air space where they can fly over that has to be identified you can provide let's say few acres of land but they should be having an clearance to operate in area let's say 50 kilometers and uh, let's say 5 nautical miles either side or 10 kilometer either side and they can operate up to 50 kilometer or it's a rectangular area or it's a um, you know pentagon any area which is safe which can be used and then it becomes a, a good test uh, area uh, well explained may i request you go to the Uh, where you are red green zones slide red green zone yeah you you had a kilometer wise well articulated slide previous previous to okay oh okay 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 yeah. this one yes one so i just wanted your expert opinion that once i am the custodian of a industrial area or a facility and i am declared as a red zone like now private air airports are also there and i want to use a drone which is bought for surveillance or mapping or any other application so what is the rule position do i had uh, still have to take a permission or i have to only inform no 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 a red zone the ent entity which has been involved in promulgation of red zone so via ministry of civil aviation you have to ask permission from that entity to allow you to operate it can be operation can be on a uh, case to case basis they can clear you for a particular period they can clear you for a particular uh, you know uh, regularly they can renew it so uh, but uh, it's a positive permission required not without permission red zone uh, when you look at a yellow zone it is a air traffic controller which can allow you okay because uh, recently we are having a challenge where one entity port has bought uh, drone but it is port itself is declared for red zone uh, for within the yeah sometimes rule. sometimes the organizations which are involved uh, uh, government to government also they they yes. lack synergy yes and uh, since they have given uh, you know this task is given to a private entity now it becomes a headache of the private entity so i think that kind of synergy if you know the process and if uh, that uh, entity is proactive i think you can take approvals yeah so, so there is a co collaboration it is possible let's say port entity a port is there but the red zone is decided by somebody nearby whose airspace it is falling over that can also happen so then they have to collaborate with those entities in this case the port itself being a strategic yeah, asset, so the, that the port is declared red zone and port is not able to get a, a their own uh, they, per permission no i i think it has it would have gone from their own ministry yes so i think they should first take up with their own ministry and then take up with the ministry of civil aviation oh, very well uh, it articulated presentation views very enriching and uh, very beneficial i must compliment on that i have listened on earlier occasion also and this is my opportunity to get clearance again thank you thank you very much uh, somebody great presentation just following up on the gentleman's question there with respect to a drone corridor as you must be already aware goa's drone policy was out in a gazette like a few months maybe a close to a year 2022 yeah 2022 yeah so would you like uh, is there any work being done in terms of suggestion of an amendment to that drone policy with respect to this corridor or is there 
no uh, this is no no this is a suggestion to add on to the implementation of the policy what i am suggesting uh, that's a uh, over, overarching policy document once you have a policy document somebody has to implement it so these are in fact my recommendation when i say goa as a drone technology hub uh, somewhere we have to industry as well as the government entities who listen to this uh, presentation can probably you know look at it and of course wherever i am there i can guide any way required so it is possible to translate that policy uh, how do we uh, operationalize that policy that is my re recommendation when i say we can make a drone corridor so now that policy has to be really put into practice by somebody in the uh, 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 industry somebody in the government to say okay we will use that policy and now make a drone testing uh, zone or we will make a drone corridor anybody can operate we will make a uh, online portal for you know online Online, you can take approval. You can have a minimum payment charges, or rather, as you know, you can allow academic institutions free testing. Whatever mechanism you want to have it, I'm telling you how to really put it into practice. That is a policy per document. I'm telling you how to put it into action. One last question, if I, if you have time, is with respect to drone forensics. I know uh, I'm a certified pilot myself, so we do get a UIN number and stuff like that as a equivalent to a license plate of a bike, just for people who don't know. So, uh, is there some work being done with respect to forensics in terms of identifying? So, say a license plate. So I mean, if you're riding a bike rashly, the cops catch you. For a simple example. So, is there some work being done in this okay. area? Or? Okay. Okay. It's an interesting point. Uh, See, uh, the way you have a license plate, the UIN number, anyone approved drone will have a UIN number. If you catch a person, he doesn't have a UIN, he's unauthorized. The government rule is very clear. Now, coming to identification of a flying drone, you know, every time you, you don't want to, uh, you know, make the drone land and check. So, there is a proposal to do a remote identification of a flying drone. For that, I was saying we need a R&D programs in India because we are, uh, after the policy of 2021, we have not taken technology initiative to really um, operationalize uh, real-time uh, tracking of the uh, compliant drones. I am not talking of rogue drones. Even compliant drones, you have to track them. So I think that initiative is lacking. Potential exists. Indian industry can develop these technologies, demonstrate them. If opportunity is given, if any validation tests are done, I am uh, quite confident that we can have these technologies. Uh, then we need an uh, unmanned aerial vehicle traffic management system. Those systems are also being developed by some of the Indian entities. If we launch, let's say, R&D or a development program uh, by under any DST program or my Ministry of Civil Aviation launches some program, we can have these technologies within India and it is possible. It will take some time to adopt it because digital sky, it has to be integrated with the digital sky. Tomorrow this happens, the digital sky will have to be integrated with the air defense system so that tomorrow you can really see whether that drone is a rogue or whether you can differentiate between a friendly or an enemy drone. So these are the technologies which can be validated. I am confident of Indian industry's capability. We need ownership and uh, at policy and uh, launching of some of those initiatives. So thank you. Great presentation again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Drop this, this, this. Drop this, this, this.